in life, nothing worth having comes easy. The same is true with fitness. It takes great dedication and patience in all areas of your diet and in your training in order to achieve a superior physique. I think that I've finally figured out what it takes to achieve that superior physique. But I'm just getting started. So when you start a bulk, whether you're a beginner or you're an advanced lifter, there is a strong urge just to increase your calories by a large amount. Um, a lot of people are coming off a summer diet and they have these deep cravings that have been building up inside of them for a couple months. And so there always is this urge to increase your calories by a lot. But I highly recommend people to restrain themselves a little bit and start by just increasing with a surplus of three to 400 calories from the get go and then increasing per week by a maximum of 50 calories because this will prevent you from overloading your system and overwhelming your metabolism right off the bat um, and it keeps yourself accountable as you go through this bulk. So you might be wondering, well what should my macronutrient makeup be? I don't really know what my maintenance calories are. And so there are a variety of ways to find that. You can use some of the formulas I have in the description to figure that out or you can just do it by trial and error where you just start at a very low calories, typically around 2000, and just slowly start to increase it. And once you see your weight on the weight scale going up, that tells you that you are over your maintenance because the general rule of thumb is whenever you eat more than your maintenance calories, you're going to gain weight. So as far as the overall makeup of the actual macronutrients, the very first thing you should look at, the baseline, the minimum, is getting one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if you're 180 pounds, you should be eating at least 180 grams of protein per day, at least, at very minimum. So after protein is taken care of, I generally like to recommend people to do what makes them happy and what they're comfortable with as far as carbs and fat. There's this huge negative stigma about fat. People think that fat is automatically going to put fat on your body, and that's just not true. It is true that fat has more calories. It's more calorie dense than carbs and protein. Keep in mind that one gram of protein has four calories, one gram of carb has four calories, but one gram of fat has nine. So that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If you like more fat in your diet, that's cool. But just keep in mind that your overall daily expenditure of calories is gonna be taken up by a larger percentage of fat if you choose to go that route. So next people ask, well, should I be lean or dirty bulking? There's this big debate whether one or the other is better. And I don't think there's a necessarily black or white answer explaining which one is better. I think it really depends on the individual. You have to look at the person's metabolism. Is it really high? And for them to gain weight, they need to eat a lot of calories. If yes, then maybe dirty bulking is the answer, but I still don't think that that's the end all be all for that question. I think that it really depends on your stage in lifting. If you are a beginner lifter who has a pretty small foundation and you're relatively inexperienced and you're just trying to gain a lot of size really quickly, I think that dirty bulking may be the answer then. But my main problem with dirty bulking is that it makes you kind of fall into this lazy mentality. When people refer to dirty bulking, they basically just mean eat everything in sight, eat as much as you can, no matter what, and hopefully you'll get your daily calorie needs. I still think that if you are dirty bulking, you should be tracking everything that you eat. Think about it, you track your finances, you track your school, you track what you're doing at work. So why not track one of the most important aspects of your life, food. Just because you're not dieting, doesn't mean you shouldn't track your food. A lot of people start to second guess themselves when their veins and their abs start to disappear, and their first inst instinct is to cut back down to their leaner weight. You have to be able to push back 
push past those mental barriers in order to build a good foundation of muscle. So then I think that lean bulking is the better answer for the majority of people out there. You avoid a lot of the pitfalls that you run into when you dirty bulk. You don't put on as much fat, so you're put in, in a much better position for when you start to shred down for the summer. So when people go into bulking, they typically approach their training in either one of two ways. So the first one is to increase their weight and decrease their reps as they go into their sets, typically around three to five sets per exercise. And the other method is to keep their weight relatively constant throughout their three to five sets, but keep their reps a little bit higher. If that doesn't make sense, let me lay out a little example to help you understand a little bit better. So say we're doing bench press and our comfortable or working weight is 135 pounds. So in the first method, we do you know maybe 12, 13 reps with 135 pounds. And then for our second set, we do like 11 to 12 reps with 145 pounds. And then for our, our third set, we do like 155 for nine or 10 reps. Generally, that's what it would look like. Um, and then you'd increase the weight as you go on in the weeks of training and hopefully increase the, uh, the amount of reps that you can do as well. In the other scenario, what you would do is you start with like 145 pounds and you start with a little bit higher reps, 16, 15, 14. If our main goal is hypertrophy or to grow your muscle, it's important to increase the weight at a rate that is appropriate for your body. If it's too heavy, you're gonna have to recruit other muscle groups in order to push that weight, which is fine if you're trying to increase your strength, but if your primary goal is to increase your muscle and recruit as many muscle fibers as possible, you may want to decrease your weight a little bit more. Sticking with our example, if I went up to 155 pounds, and was trying to do it for you know 13 reps, but I couldn't really do it with the correct form and I had to use more of my shoulders and my triceps, I wouldn't be contracting my chest the best that I could, recruiting as much muscle fibers as I would be able to if I decreased the weight just a little bit. So what I recommend you doing is really track the weight that you're using based on your rating of perceived exertion. Rating of perceived exertion or RPE is a common method for a lot of power lifters who track their workouts. And just because they're power lifter doesn't mean that you can't use it when you're trying to gain muscle. So rating of perceived exertion is a scale of one to 10, but people only use five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 as the rating. Um, but typically what it means is if you're training at RPE of 10, that means that you have no reps left in your tank. That means that you have, you're hit pretty much hitting failure on the last set. A last rep, sorry. Rating a perceived exertion of nine means that you have around maybe one or one and a half reps left before you hit failure. Uh, rating a perceived exertion of eight means that you have like two, maybe two and a half reps left. And seven means like three and a half, maybe four, so on and so forth. People don't really go below five, just, just the way it is. So what I recommend people to do is to train a round of an RPE of seven to eight when their primary goal is hypertrophy. If you feel like you're really getting close to failure on your sets as you're getting up in weight, maybe decrease it a little bit so that you can really feel that mind-muscle connection in order to contract the muscle more effectively. All right, that'll just wrap it up for the video today, guys. If you enjoyed it, please leave it a thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. If you have any questions about bulking or just fitness in general, feel free to DM me on Instagram. My username is BaylorFit or just send me an email, all my contact info is below. Um, but yeah, good luck to everybody who is embarking on their bulk uh, for 2018. I really wish you guys all the best. And so with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.